local anesthetics are voltage gated sodium channel blockers. So they basically have the ability to block any neuron, whether it's an afferent or an efferent. And since the voltage gated sodium channel is so ubiquitous, local anesthetics also have significant potential for toxicity, which we'll also talk about in this video. So this is a neuron with a lipid bilayer and a voltage gated sodium channel. So the usual function of this would be sodium flowing in through this channel once sufficient depolarization has propagated along the length of this neuron and specifically around the voltage sensing part of this receptor. This neuron may be carrying information about pain or temperature or touch or attempting to send down motor or sympathetic outflow. And basically when the local anesthetic binds to the intracellular domain of this channel, it blocks the function of this. So the uh, sodium cannot flow into the cell and you're gonna remain around your resting membrane potential. There will be no depolarization of this cell and total blockage of this information. I've drawn a couple local anesthetic molecules here. This one is lidocaine. I'll just draw your attention to the basic structure of all of these, which is common. And that is a benzene ring, which is technically lipid soluble. And then there's an amine group. And these are connected together by some type of bond. And in this case, it's an amide bond. Local anesthetics are either amides or esters based on what this linkage is. So this one has a nitrogen group, therefore it's the amide bond. Um, next we have bupivacaine. And notice that it too also has this benzene ring, an amide bond, and then just a different shaped amine group, which happens to be a little bit more lipophilic, which changes the properties of this local anesthetic. And just to show you an ester local anesthetic, this is chloroprocaine. And it has an ester bond here, which means that its metabolism will be different than those with the amide bond. The amides are metabolized by the liver. And generally that's a little bit slower. Whereas the esters are broken down by plasma esterases. In, in fact, this is pseudocolonesterase, which may be a familiar name to you. And this tends to be a little bit faster for metabolism because as soon as the local anesthetic is in your bloodstream, it's surrounded by these uh, esterases, which will break it down. Local anesthetics are all weak bases which means they're in equilibrium between two forms, this regular base form and a protonated version of this, where this uh, amine group will pick up a proton. And this is the ionized version of the molecule. This is important because this ionized version of the molecule does not cross the cell membrane. This positive charge makes it hydrophilic or not lipophilic, so it does not easily cross the lipid bilayer. This non-ionized version does cross the cell membrane because it is relatively lipophilic. Lipophilic. So both versions of this molecule are floating around in equilibrium, but there's actually at physiologic pH going to be a, a higher proportion of this ionized version because of the pKa. They're all weak bases, so we know they're going to have a relatively high pKa. The pKa of lidocaine happens to be 7.9, which is higher than our physiologic pH. Just to remind you, 
when your pH is the same as your pKa. So if you put this um, lidocaine in a solution where the pH is 7.9, you'll end up with 50% in the ionized version and 50% in the non-ionized. But we know that our physiologic pH is 7.4, which is relatively more acidic than this pH where you'd have a 50-50 split between these two forms. And acidic environments are proton donors. Therefore, we know that this physiologic pH, which is relatively more acidic, will donate more protons to this molecule. So that's why we're going to have a higher percentage in this ionized form. So here we'll have 76% in the ionized form and only 24% non-ionized. Which means that when we um, inject our lidocaine, we have a lesser amount of this version of the molecule that is readily available to cross the cell membrane. Um, and that's okay because when this crosses, because these are in equilibrium, we'll get more of the non-ionized and lipophilic version. It's just something to keep in mind because we actually can manipulate the pH of the environment to change the onset time of a local anesthetic. Just to complete this diagram, once we have this non-ionized form, it crosses our cell membrane. And it actually has to become ionized before it will attach. So this version of the lidocaine, or actually any local anesthetic um, that binds to the intracellular domain, actually is the positively charged version again. I also meant to point out that um, the amide local anesthetics have two eyes in the name, so lidocaine, bupivacaine, whereas the ester local anesthetics only have the one eye in the name. So instead of memorizing which uh, of the local anesthetics are amides and which are esters, use this rule of just looking at how many eyes are in the name to prompt you about how they're metabolized.